What's up guys, Mike Dakota here. Today we're gonna go over the coin challenge, uh, coin change problem, okay? On HackerRank. Now I know I, have, I haven't done any uh, algorithm problems in a long time and I haven't done that many data structures. I'm I've been mostly doing data structures, but I think I wanted to go back to algorithms. I think algorithms are kind of, I don't really know that much about DP, so it's kind of nice if I teach you guys dynamic programming also, and then I also go learn along the way also. So yeah. This is going to be a problem called the coin change problem. So essentially, as you're given a amount of cents, right? The total cents that you have. So let's say we have total number of senses. So like when I say cents, let's say like three cents. So here n is equal to three. So I have three cents. Now I'm given the C array, which represents the uh, different types of coins I could pick from this. So I have like eight cents, an eight cents coin, a three cents coin, a one cents coin, a two cents coin. Now, I want to determine how many different ways of change I can make given an unli unlimited supply of each of these type of coins of $0.08, cents, $0.03, cents, $0.01, cents, $0.02. Cents. So, for example, one way to make a change is essentially is that um, I can just repeatedly pick one, right? I just repeat, pick one. So let's say I pick this first coin of one. So then my total sense will now be two, right? my total sense that I decreased will get decreased by one. So now it's two. And let's say I pick one again. Then now I, my sense that I have remaining is going to decrease by one again. So now it's going to be one. If I pick one again, my um, number of cents I have will be one minus one will be zero. Right? So then my essentially is my bag is that I'm picking from uh, my current bag will have will just have all ones one one one. And that's one way you could pick um, the one way to pick these coins in order to uh, get a value of total sense of three, right? Because one plus one plus one gets you three. So another way you could pick is by picking one and picking two, right? So you have pick one and then I pick two. So then my current sense would be three, right? And the final way you could pick is pick three. So I just pick three and then my current sense would just be three. So as you can see here, um, the order does not matter, right? So if I pick one and then pick two, that's ex exactly the same as if I pick two and I pick one. So here they're they're asking for how many different how many ways change can be made. So they're not counting about order. Order does not matter. Okay. Otherwise, there would be way more um, way more ways you could pick. Another thing that you have to notice is that here you cannot pick eight, right? Because eight this coin of eight has uh, eight cents and eight is greater than my total sense of three. So if I pick eight, um, I'm going to have negative sense in the end, and I don't want that, right? I can't have negative senses, right? So like my total sense I will have is three, and I cannot pick eight because of it. It's too large. It's greater than my total amount that I want, right? My total amount I want is three, so I can't have eight. Okay. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, this these are the different ways to pick this as another example to do it. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna explain how to do this problem in, uh, in by using a table form. So here, uh, I'll just go pick, open this. So here, if I, use, let's say I had a, open a spreadsheet. So what you could do this is you could use something called dynamic programming. This is a dynamic programming problem. And uh, I'll just explain to you guys how to, how to do this, okay? So what, what we're gonna do is essentially is that, um, we are going to have a row and uh, we have, we're going to have four rows and three columns. Okay. And the reason why we have four rows is that we have four different types of coins we could pick from, right? So here we have um, eight, three, one, two. So in this case, we could pick um, eight, three, one, two. These ro four rows will re um, represent like whether I'm picking this current coin or not. So if I, in this case, um, 8312, right? This is gonna be your row. Uh, I'm actually gonna actually unhighlight this because it's kind of confusing. Um, yeah, so this is the type of, this is gonna be our table, okay? Four rows, four rows, and then three columns. 
Um, this this should actually be yeah here here I'm gonna unhighlight this also because it's also kind of confusing for you guys. Okay, so this is like the the table that we're gonna build, and each of these will represent whether I'm picking the current coin or not. So here we have four rows, which, which represents uh, the current coin that I'm picking up. And um, these three columns will represent like the total cents that I have, right? Each of the senses. So I have one, two, and three. So N represents like um, the total number of cents I have, right? See, this is going to represent like um, the senses if I choose at this current sense, whether it's less than or greater than the coin that I'm picking of, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to build this table. And uh, each of the row represents if I pick this row, pick this current coin, whether or not. And then uh, while we're building this table in the end, this last value is going to represent the our end result of the different choices that we're making. Okay. So the um, in this case, in what I have in this current code, is uh, I build this table of... Uh, this size plus one, and then this um, of C size plus one. So I actually build this uh, five rows, and uh, I actually have four columns. The reason why I do this is because I'm actually I want to index from index at one, because uh, yeah, sometimes you have issues if you if you don't index from one. And I'm indexing from one because the coins I pick later on be later on. But um, essentially, is it's about the same thing as doing indexing for four. But um, yeah, so what, what I'm doing is I have like an extra row in case if I go out of bounds. But uh, yeah, the, this is the this is the extra row. Um, yeah. Okay, so the first part of the code, what I'm doing is I'm assuming that I pick each of these choices, I'm gonna assume that I pick all of them. Okay, so the first choice I'm doing is I'm assuming I pick this coin eight, I'm going to assume I picked this coin three, I assume I could pick this coin one, and I assume I, pick, I could pick this coin two. So one represents I'm I'm picking this coin, and uh, whether I'm picking this coin or not, okay? So that's what this is. So in the beginning, I'm just going to assume I, pick, I could pick all the coins, okay? So in each of these states, this, each of these rows represents assuming I pick the starting value of eight. So if I start this value of eight, that means I assume I pick this coin eight, and then I want to see what can I build off of picking this coin of eight. Here, this three represents if I pick this coin three, and I'm assuming what I could build off of if I pick this coin three. And one represents if I pick this start picking this coin one, and I see if, what I could build off of picking this coin one. And two represents uh, if I pick this coin two, and see if I what if I build this or not. Okay, so what do I do here? Is I loop from zero to the size of my uh, rows. So here is zero to the size of here. So this would represent uh, all the columns, uh, all the different types of coins I could pick from. So yeah, I'm going to loop through from zero to the each of the coins I'm picking from. And here I'm going to start, I'm going to loop from one to the total number of cents I could have. So the first, uh, uh, essentially is I want to check um, from one to three so I have a total, I want to have a total of three cents, right? So what I'm doing is I'm going to loop through from all the values from one up to three of a total of three cents and see if um, using each of these values, see if I could pick the coins that I have out of my coins of bags that I have, see if I could pick those. Because if I could pick them, then I'll just add one to it. And if I can't, well, then I can't pick it, right? It's essentially what it's doing. So yeah. So here I'm looping from each of the coins and here I'm going to loop through from one to the total number of cents I have and see if I could pick these values. Okay. So if I is greater than zero, that means that, um, I is greater than zero. That means that I'm not, um, I'm picking like other values. Um, I is great. So I represents like the, the rows and here, uh, C, uh, J represents the columns, right? J represents the columns. Here. So I represents each of these rows. So if I'm not at the first row, that means I'm going to uh, add by the previous rows, right? Because my current state depends on my previous state that I'm currently picking from, 
right? So uh, essentially, is it's also mean could means that we're excluding if we don't want to pick this row, okay? If we don't want to pick this current coin. But anyway, uh, my current choice does depend on my previous choice, so that's why I do this dp of ij plus equal to i minus one. So i minus one represents the previous choice that I made, and I'm gonna add add the value of the previous choice. The reason why I do this is because um because I'm assuming that all the values I'm picking each of these coins first. Um, if I'm not at the first coin, I'm gonna assume that I I picked the previous coin already. So I have to add one regardless. I have to add from the previous value regardless. So that's why I have this. Now here it gets a little tricky. So here what I'm doing is since I'm looping from J from one to the total sense, I'm going to check each of these values if I could pick each of these coins. Okay. So here in this case, I'm checking, hey, if I'm looping from one to all of my sense, my total sense, can I pick this value eight, right? Can I pick this value eight? And if I do, then, then I need to add from my previous values of picking this eight. So if I can pick it, um, then I need to add my I, my current value, and the J minus the previous value. And the reason why I do J minus C of I, so C of I represents this the cost of this coin, right? C of I represents this eight, this three, this one, this two, right? So if my current current sense that I'm looping from one to the total senses, right? Subtracted from each of this coin is greater than or equal to zero. That means that I could pick this coin. So like if, let's say my coin was like, my total sense was three, right? Based on everything. Well, um, if I could pick this value of three, right, then I'm gonna do three minus three, and then my total sense in the end would be zero. Because it's zero, that means I could pick it, right? I could pick this value, right? If it's greater than or equal to zero, that means I could pick this value. Whereas if I try to pick eight, three minus eight would give me negative five, right? And I can't have negative five cents, right? This n represents the total number of cents I could pick. So I can't have pick a value that's greater than it. Otherwise I would get a negative value and I can't have negative cents. So that's why this is checking. If my cents, then I'm looping from one to the total cents. If I subtract by the current cents of the current co type of coin that I'm picking from, and if it's greater than or equal to zero, then I'm going to include it, right? I'm gonna do dp plus equals dp of i, j minus c of i, okay? That's what this is saying. That's what it does, okay? And um, this, the, this, this, the first if statement is assuming if I exclude it, right? Like I'm not including it. But um, because I, I set all the dp values to have one in the beginning, I'm assuming I include all the values. So in the case where this if statement never runs, then it's just gonna add the previous value of it and exclude the current, uh, the current j minus c of i, okay? So yeah, that's what this this if statement does. So assuming if it's assuming like if we exclude it, hey, add the value anyway. But if we're not excluding it, then we're just going to add dp of i and j minus c of i. So yeah, that's essentially this, both of these building this dp array. And then in the end, we're just going to return c dot size minus one in n. Okay, we're gonna return the the nth value of our current DP array. So yeah, that's the, the essentially the gist of this problem. This is like how I coded the solution. There's other ways to do it. I know some people coded this um, instead of assuming that you could pick all the values of ones of each of these coins. Yeah, I know some people start at zero and then they're what they do is they, when they include something, they're gonna add by, it, when they want to include this, they'll just add by one, right, for each of the coins. If they don't want to include, they add by zero, right? They just have this equal to it. But in our, in my case, I said all these, uh, I'm assuming I pick each of the coin first, so that's why I have equals to one. Um, so that's why I do it this, this way. But if you didn't want to do it this way and you want to start at all the coins starting at zero, 
and having one to include it and zero if you not include it, then um, you would have this to all equal to zero. And then this part you would, um, if you're excluding it, you have to check if it's like, if you're including it, you would do plus equal to this and you would have an else statement and then it would equal to the previous value, right? It, was, it wouldn't just be like, it wouldn't be plus equals, but yeah. Okay, so that's the, the, that's basically the gist of this problem. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's essentially just breaking this problem down to each of the sub problems and um, adding the values back up. And then once you get that, that's the end of it. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.